I'm Morgan from Whole Latte Love. I'm here with Mark, the espresso professor. Hello. We've had a lot of customers ask us what the difference is in working with milk for either a cappuccino or a latte. So Mark, why don't we start by just giving our viewers some basic tips on working with milk. Sure. One of the things that you'd always like to try to do when you're steaming your milk is you want to have a cold steaming pitcher. Uh, a really good one, this is an Espero pitcher which is specifically designed for steaming milk easier. You also want to have cold milk, you can use whatever kind of milk you choose. And then the other thing you want to do is have a good machine, which we do have, and whether you use the thermometer or your hand, I'll be using my hand, you always want to steam your milk to somewhere to be about a, between about 155 to 160 degrees. Mark, why don't we start off by you showing us how to prepare milk for a cappuccino. Sure. Now the whole idea of steaming the milk for the cappuccino, the first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and you want to purge your steam one to get any water that may be built up in there like that. You always want to use cold milk and a cold pitcher are helpful. And you never want to fill your pitcher more than half full. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and one of the things too is you get used to this based on the size of the glass you're using, you know how much milk to pour in the pitcher which is probably a lot more detail than you need right now in this video. But we are going to go ahead and steam now. One of the things I like to do, I always like to get my steam wine positioned. And what I'm going to do is we're going to do what we've talked about before is creating the W spot. So you want to position your tip right below the milk. You want to turn it on full blast, which I'm going to do right now. And that's the sound you want to hear. Now what I'm doing is I got the milk spinning in there. And I'm going to go ahead and as you hear that noise, I'm just going to slowly lower the pitcher. And what that does is that gives me the ability to go ahead and create lots of good dense foam. And I'm just going to keep lowering the pitcher. And as you can see, I'm keeping the milk spinning in the pitcher. And if you go to a coffee shop and you hear this sound, it's a good thing. And I'm just going to keep lowering it in there. I kind of lost my spot so I'm trying to show the angle. There we go. And we're almost there. There we go. And that's plenty hot enough. So I'm going to go ahead and shut it down. And. One of the things I did is by angling the pitcher like that, I did create some bubbles there at the end. So when you remove your pitcher from the steam one, you want to make sure you shut it off completely. Otherwise, you're going to get a lot of big bubbles, which you don't really want. You can kind of cheat and do this and eliminate them, get a little love tap. And next, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create the actual cappuccino. All right, Mark, now that you have your shot, let's go ahead and pour that cappuccino. Sure. One of the unique, one of the cool things about making a cappuccino is the big, the big thing about a cappuccino is going to be one-third espresso, one-third steam milk, one-third foam milk. So we're going to go ahead and pour it out. Now what I like to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hold back the foam, which I worked so hard to create. I'm going to pour slowly in so I do not break the crema. And I'm going to get the glass about two-thirds full. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and take all that foam I worked so hard to create. And we get that right on top there, as you can see. And then you can tell by the glass, I got third espresso, third steam milk, third foam milk. And if you want, can you put a little dollop on top to make it look perfect. Okay, so a cappuccino is a third, a third, and a third. Now why don't we go ahead and prepare the milk for a latte so we can see what the difference is. Sure. Latte milk is a little bit different. What you're trying to do is uh, we're going to do the same type of thing. We're going to steam our milk. We're going to purge our steam wine again. We'll get that all ready. This time I'm going to try to put the right amount of milk in the pitcher because of the latte you want to kind of finish it off strong at the end. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to create not as much foam. I'm actually just going to try to steam my milk and you'll see in the picture what I want to do is I'm going to find my W spot where the milk spins and I'm going to basically maintain that position in the pitcher and just let the milk keep spinning and heat up so I don't create this rich dense foam. I just create a nice steam thick milk without the foam which is not that hard to do once you get the technique. So we're going to go ahead and do this. Again I'm going to get my steam one in position, my steaming pitcher and I'm going to position it where I want it. Here we go. I'm going to turn it on all the way. That's a beautiful sound. I'm just going to let it sit there and spin. As you notice, I'm not lowering the pitcher to create more foam. I'm just trying to keep the milk spinning in the pitcher. As you can see, that sound is really the key that what you want to know that you're doing a good job. I'm just going to let that go ahead and keep heating up. 
And the idea is you don't really want to create a lot of bubbles. Of course, you want to get your milk up to temperature, which is going to be about 155, 160 degrees. All right, we're almost there. There we go, and I'm going to go ahead and shut it off. There we go. Of course, we would wipe down our steam one at the end, and we're going to show you how to make the drink. So, Mark, we've got our shot of espresso ready. Let's go ahead and pour that latte. Sure. One thing you want to do is when you're pouring your latte milk, you don't really need to hold back the foam like you do with a cappuccino. You just want to start slow. You don't want to break the crema. There we go. Perfect. And as you can see, there's really no foam going into this. I'm just going to pour nice and slow. The whole idea is you want to keep that crema looking beautiful. Now some people like to do latte art, which I'm not really good at, so I'm not going to do that. And I just pour nice and slow. And at the end there, if I want to put a little bit of swirl on it just to make it look pretty, I can do that. If you want to make it even pretty, you can make a little design like that. That's nice. Yes, it is. It's quite pretty. And there you have a latte. So the latte really is all steamed milk with your espresso. And the cappuccino is? Well, you got I mean, if you let's put them side by side. So if you go into a coffee shop, you get a latte, you're going to have all steamed milk with a little bit of that beautiful foam on top. And if you go to a coffee shop and you get a drink that looks like that, they actually know what they're doing. Uh, here's our cappuccino. So it's going to be one-third espresso, one-third steam milk, one-third foam milk. Fortunately, it's been sitting for a few seconds, so it didn't look quite as pretty as once we made it. But that's really the difference. And if you go to a coffee shop and two of you go together and somebody orders, let's say, somebody orders a cappuccino and somebody orders a latte, you should be able to pick up the cups. And the latte should be heavier because it has a lot more milk in it. Mm -hmm. The cappuccino should be lighter because it has more foam in it. And that's really the difference in the two drinks. Great. Thanks, Mark. It's always good to have the espresso professor here with us sharing tips and tricks. I'm Morgan. This is Mark. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Whole Latte Love is your source for expert coffee information with more than 200 videos including how-tos, recipes, machine comparisons, maintenance, and more.